a StarCraft strategist, has the ability to combine the innovative, perceptive, and holistic insights of a build order with the pragmatic and systemic skills of a pro to guide strategic direction in the StarCraft universe. Introducing The Strategist. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode four of The Strategist. My name is Octane Pro, and joining me, as always, is my beautiful, my lovely co-host, Buddha. Buddha, how's it going? That's a little creepy. It's going good, man. How's it going there, big boy? <laughs> well, excellent. Sounds good. Uh, it's been a crazy week for um, not only StarCraft II, but eSports. But before we jump into that, uh, we wanted to let you guys know of kind of a special deal that just came to our attention uh, that we wanted to let our audience know about. Um, so pretty much, we actually have our first sponsor, which is uh, TweakedAudio.com. Uh, just want to reach out to our audience, let you guys know to please go ahead and check out their awesome earbuds. Uh, you guys get 30% off and also free shipping um, off of some really sweet gaming and music and also voice um, earbuds. So if you're really into earbuds, you do a lot of stuff with uh, you know listening to it at work, listening to it on the road, going to the gym. Make sure you check it out, tweakedaudio.com. Use the promo code BUILDORDER, and that will automatically let you use 30% off and the free shipping. And don't forget, it's build order, one word. Well, in the meantime here, uh, as I said, it's been a big week for uh, StarCraft 2 and not only um, MLG. Uh, Budo, what have you kind of been watching, and uh, what are some things that have kind of sparked your interest over the last week? You know me, I've been watching everything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, first thing we need to talk about, MLG. Spoiler alert! If you haven't seen it, what the hell are you doing watching? Oh, actually, stay here. <laughs> you can go watch it after, but That's spoiler right. alert. Dude, Tejo played really, really well. Yeah, there's been a lot of excitement, actually, around Tejo. Um and, and over the past, I think, two weeks or so, and uh, I was not surprised to see how well he was doing. Uh, I'm actually really happy to see a Team Liquid member uh, make their way up the ranks and getting first place. Uh, I think Team Liquid deserves it. Uh, there hasn't been a ton of um, high-ranking players recently for Team Liquid, so I unfortunately didn't get to watch the series yet. I was away. I promise I will go watch it in the next few days. Um, you're, you're a terrible person, Octane. I'm terrible. I'm done. I'm done. I'm off the show. Um, for me personally, uh, the series that really stood out to me um, was the Cytoplasm versus Hero on the first day. I did get to watch the entire first day of MLG, and without a doubt, uh, that was the most surprising, ser surprising series to me, uh, just because of Cytoplasm coming out of the gates, and I think surprised all of us with the first game. Did you have an opportunity to check that out? Yeah, a relatively unknown player took the first game off of Hero on Cloud Kingdom and PVZ, so... Uh... And he played really well in that, and he lost the next two games, so he did lose that best of three. But, yeah. uh, you know, he proved that he can take a real game. It wasn't a cheese game. It was it was a legit macro game, and he uh, he did a really good job. Yeah, game one, Cytoplasm. Game two, I feel like was still even a close game, but Hero won that game. And then game three was just a steamroll with Hero uh, versus Cytoplasm. He was just warming up. Exactly. It was like, ah, <laughs> oh, first game, first series, you know. But either way, though, uh, it was really cool to see a player which – isn't as popular as some of our other players like Hero do so well. Um, and I was really surprised that, oh my gosh, are we going to see Hero get dropped down to the loser's bracket so quickly uh, with MLG just starting? So um, congratulations to Cytoplasm. I mean, qualifying for MLG, getting to play Hero as uh, his first opponent. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I will be going back and watching a lot more of MLG due to their DVR kind of cool series. But uh, anything else I missed that you kind of wanted to touch on? Yeah, there were a couple of things, actually. Um, sure. One, I thought the Ryung versus Stefano games were really, really good Terran versus Zergs. Okay. Uh, I really recommend everyone going back and watching those. They were like, oh, they're so even on both sides. It, it went to game three. and it, it, uh, I don't want to spoil game three, but really, go watch uh, Hero, or, sorry, Stefano versus Ryung. Yes. Players Ryung. Yeah. And uh, also, Oz beat Stefano in a PVZ, <laughs> which is... Not something that's happened in the last, what, like two years? PVZ, Stefano lost. Uh, and he lost twice. He went, like, 2-1 and one in the first series and then 2-0 and oh in their second series. So Oz single-handedly knocked Stefano out of MLG this weekend. Yeah, I was watching the first day and saw how well Stefano did. And the casters were definitely emphasizing, like, wow, if Stefano keeps on the track he's going, 
he might have a possibility to just play Protoss players from here on out, and he has such a high win rate versus uh, Protoss. And what had happened was exactly what you said. You know, he did well versus the one Protoss, he went to the second one, and, uh, you know, he kind of got knocked out with that. So I was really surprised. Um, part of me is like, Steph Alonso kind of deserved it because he's been so cocky recently with, oh, I don't practice, you know, the day of or day before type of stuff. But Steph Alonso did just come off of, like, a eSports high. Um, Look, with- man, it's not cocky <laughs> when you win every game ever. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I, I don't know how that feels, but, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Well, I know. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I'm glad at least one of us does now. So. And, you know, one last thing also, stepping away from MLG, is GSL, we have a PvP finals for the... Yes. Oh, God. Am I going to put myself out on an island here? I think it's the first time ever. That I, I, that I know of, that I, know of uh, I would say yes, but we could be mistaken. Um, and who are you rooting for here? Who are you rooting for? I don't care. <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't you care? Don't You're just know. like, oh, it's Protoss. I don't care. Protoss will win either way. No, no, no. It's just, you know, it, I, PvP, I don't have a huge, I don't know. I, I'm expecting the entire series to go about an hour long. <laughs> it's like oh 10 minute timings go 10 minute timings go we We're could done. see some really cool like mothership archon uh yeah. charge lot plays you know after the game develops a little bit we'll see how long both players last but i'm sure we're gonna see some one base all ins and uh, all that kind of stuff you know definitely definitely all right well let's move into the main focus of the show and why everyone's actually here uh, we're gonna dive into the terran two barracks early pressure um the first thing we kind of want to talk about is just a little notes about this kind of build uh it is Specifically for uh, TVP, um, so don't be trying this against Zerg or uh, I guess another Terran. Anyways, long story short, uh, it's good versus a fast expanding Protoss. So if you scout early enough and you are seeing, okay, he's going with a Forge fast expand. Uh, this is definitely good versus that, as you can see whoa, there. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh, don't open Forge fast expand in PVT. <laughs> I think you meant one gate expand. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, with a one gate expand, uh, and then as you can see there, uh, Nexus first as well. Um, you know, this is very strong. I mean, I, I've done this several times and come across a Protoss player and I scout it and I'm so happy because I'm going that build, my timing set on. So um, definitely look for that. Uh, the hard counter uh, is by going with the three gate robo. Rush distance is very important. And Buddha, why is this very important? Well, it's very important because you're tearing and you got to walk your units all the way across the map, man. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I mean... You know, you just have to be able to get your units there, and the faster they get there, the less defenses they're going to have, and the less close they are going to be to uh, finishing warp gate and having those two additional gates come up. Yep. And finally, try to deny your opponent's scouting of your gas. Uh, that's a big deal there. Um, a lot of the times, you know, the way that this build works, uh, which we'll definitely get into it in a few minutes, but uh, you don't want to let them see that gas. Uh, you want to kind of wall off if you can, possibly, uh, or, or anything you can do to stop them from scouting this out particularly. And uh, yes. go ahead. What do you so- got? Sorry, uh, we're not going to go over someone beating a two racks defensively um, in the specific basic form of the two racks. Yep. Uh, so when we say three gate robo hard counters it, if someone opens three gate robo and you do two racks pressure, then all of a sudden they can just counterattack you with three immortals and a giant mm-hmm. army, yep. and there's almost no way to stop it. Like you need like four <laughs> bunkers and all your SCVs pulled to even try to stop it. So. Uh, Definitely. What's three gate robo? That's a good question. You go one gateway into core, and then you go robo, and then you add two more gates, or you can do the gateways first and then a robo. Uh, but uh, it's a very safe build and not very economical. So if your opponent opens one Rex FE or something, you'll be behind. Um, we'll we might do a future episode on that later. That might be a good idea. But um, note to self. <laughs> yes. Yep. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Don't worry about it. Sounds good. All right, for the build order here, guys, uh, this is just a very generic build order, very cookie cutter, uh, and we will get into kind of the variations here. But anyways, this build opens up with a 10 supply depot. You then move on to a typical 12 barracks, a 13 refinery, then 16 orbital command with your one marine. Pretty generic right here so far. 17 supply, you move into a reactor, and you build your second barracks, and then you go ahead and put down your, your second supply depot. Um, and then finally, when that second um, barracks is completed, you put all the tech lab onto it uh, at 100%. So pretty much by the time this is done, you have two supply depots, two barracks, one barracks with a reactor, one barracks with a tech lab. Um, but a lot of the time, people actually go ahead and will uh, wall off with the two supply depots in the barracks to stop complete scouting. Um, and and they use that one marine 
to pretty much take out any probes that kind of come and hit that. Um, any comments there, Buddha, with that uh, cookie cutter build? Yeah, no, uh, walling off definitely is stylistic. You don't have to do it. A lot of players are doing even at the very high league, so that's definitely not a problem uh, if you do or do not do it either way, unless you're getting proxies all rushed. But uh, basically, you're using your first Marine to deny a scout from coming up your ramp to stop them from scouting the gases that you're putting down a reactor. If your opponent scouts very early, he's going to see the gas anyways. Yep. And at that point, you can kind of make a decision, you know, do I want to do this or do I want to go to factory? Like, what decision is he going to make? You have to do your own scouting, all that kind of stuff. So uh, this is definitely something we need to look out for. But I, uh, yeah, that's that's all for that slide, I guess. Okay, sounds good. Excellent. Uh, one, Two more to go here, guys. Um, kind of the most common variations here uh, of this is um, right away. So just jumping back to the build order there. Okay, bam. The tech lab on your second barracks finishes at 100%. Now what? Um, so here's just kind of some, some variations there that we were kind of talking about. So you start concussive right away, um, and you need that to be completed by the time that you hit. Finally, you push out at two marine, or four Marines, one Marauder, and you rally your units, um, you know, your barracks to those units. Sometimes you bring along one or two SCBs for that bunker pressure. Um, and then finally, you expand at your 40 supply, you take your second gas factory into medevac play. Um, and Buddha, kind of talk a little bit about the bunker play here. You know, why do you bring those SCVs along? Why is it important to get that forward bunker pressure? Yeah, so this entire build is designed to sacrifice a little bit of economy to apply early pressure to a Protoss that you expect to fast expand. So in a lot of cases, this works a little bit better in higher leagues. Um, I don't know exactly where I want to define that, but one gate nexus is incredibly common in Masters right now. Like, one of the most common builds, along with Nexus First. There are, of course, other builds people are doing. But in uh, PVT, the metagame is basically one gate expand for Protoss players. So uh, by bringing the the SCVs with you, your opponent's going to have one of two things. He's going to have like a Zealot, Stalker, Sentry, or he's going to have a Zealot and two Sentries if he took his second gas really quickly. Uh, but if we can get a bunker down and defend it with our units, and he's putting a Nexus down, then we can deny his Nexus, force a cancel, and go back home, have a tech advantage, and be able to expand at about the same time as him and uh, really be in a nice lead there. Yep, yep, definitely. Moving on to our final slide here before we actually jump into our replays, guys. Uh, just a few other variations here um, following up uh, with that initial cookie cutter build. Uh, a one base reactor medevac, a one base two barracks tank medevac kind of combination, and a two barracks SCV all in, um, which is. Very risky, but um, it can be pulled off. And those SCVs, again, are being used for bunkers, are being used for repairs, are being used for pressure. So something to keep in mind there. Um, anything else, Buddha, you can think of before we uh, jump into our first replay? No, let's hop in and we'll uh, talk a little more as we're going through these replays here. Okay, excellent. I am in-game, set on faster, and are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's start in three, two, and one. And in the bottom right-hand corner, we have our red Terran player being represented by Intense. Yes, sir. And in the top left, we do have EG in control. If you need an introduction on in control, <laughs> I, I just don't know what to tell you. Uh, yes. But this is this is going to be a high master slash GM game in control. I think it's GM this season. I'm mm -hmm. not really sure. But uh, Intense plays for Impulse Esports, which is my team. And I stole this replay from him because I saw him play it on stream. And it was exactly what I was looking for about an hour ago. So, um, yeah, uh, we're going to see exactly how he decides to play this out what he decides to scout, uh, the decisions he makes, and we're going to talk about why he makes them, and uh, I hope I'm right on these. But he is in the chat, so he's probably going to yell at me. <laughs> why are you showing this game? It's so bad. <laughs> All right, so anyways, guys, as you can see, as we talked about in our build order, uh, 10 Supply Depot. Pretty basic. You know, I understand for a lot of you higher-level players, you know, hey, you've seen this a million times. But for any of you uh, lower-level players or beginners looking to play StarCraft or Bronze League, Silver League, that are trying to master down a build, there's your 10 supply depot. Next, we're going to go ahead and see our 12 barracks. And that should go down right about now. And there it is, perfectly. And as you can see, he is doing a wall off, even though he's going against a Protoss player. And as I said before earlier, you know, the whole purpose of this wall off is to finally put down a supply depot at the front and wall that off so his opponent doesn't scout that gas, as Buddha emphasized earlier um, uh, tonight. Yeah, and one thing I do want to point out is uh, look at his su initial supply depot placement. It's at the bottom of the ramp, so the probe has to go up and around. So it's a little further distance to try to get a scout off. Uh, in control is going to go ahead and scout very early here, so he is actually going to get in. Yep. But, um, yeah, yeah it, you know, it, he makes him go around the supply depot. If he had built it at the top position to the top left of that barracks, then, you know, the probe just slides right in, and he doesn't have to go around. So if that Marine comes out at 
the same time the probe comes in, he can still deny it, if that makes sense. Yep. If that makes sense. So once again, that barracks is completed. Uh, we do see right away that the Marine is being built, and once this SCV completes, we are going to see an overall command. So right away, uh, everything is flowing, just as we talked about originally there. Um, we do see in control going ahead and taking a gas there, kind of just for scouting, kind of just to be super annoying. Um, so once again, there is the second barracks, and we do see the reactor going down. Um, so yeah, in, in control scouted everything, right? He scouted the second barracks, he scouted one gas, he scouted the reactor. Yep. So now he should know exactly what's coming. So this gas steal, a little bit weird, because we don't normally see a gas steal against yep. a T-Rex. But Intense was planning on doing Cloak Banshee follow-up on this, which is not something we see very often. So uh, what did end up being a good decision here. Uh, as we can see, Intense has scouted in control's base. He looked at the chrono boost and said, okay... This is uh, probably not going to be a four gate, so he th assumes one gate expand and puts down that engineering bay at the natural living control. And, uh, you know, right away we do see here, um, you know, that that gas did finish, so that full amount of um, marine supply was used, or mineral supply was used there. Uh, the tech lab has gone down, um, and uh, right now we are just going to see marines getting pumped out and marauders right away. In the meantime here, uh, in control is unable to expand. As we can see, that's a pretty, uh, engineering bay. Has a little bit more health in a supply depot. Just something to keep in mind there, guys. And uh, we do see warp gate getting resourced right now. So nothing too, too crazy from it, uh, EG in control. Even though he did scout pretty much a two racks pressure. Um, and right away, 100% completion on the tech lab. And what do you see? Concussive shell. All right, so uh, one other note I do want to make about that uh, engineering bay block. Most of the time, you don't want to do it, but in control, skip the zealot, and Intense saw that. So uh, when you skip the zealot, you don't have as much DPS to take that eBay down quite as quickly. So definitely a good decision there. Delayed that Nexus for a long time, and as we can see, one Marauder, five Marines, Intense pushes out with one SCV. Uh, he uses one SCV because he has some form of decent control and won't lose it right away. <laughs> but uh, I always pull two because yep. my control is not as good. Agreed, agreed there. And you will see right away, guys, he does have additional units getting streamed out um, to go ahead and support these units here, uh, which is always so, so important, just in case your opponent does scout it. Uh, but right away here, all we have right now are um, two sentries and one stalker versus one, one marauder and... Five, six, seven marines, and look at this right away. He puts down the bunker as we talked about to add that support. He stays in a safe distance. He hasn't lost anything yet, and he's gonna most likely either take down or deny that nexus. And it looks like that nexus will complete, which will put intense in a beautiful position. Yeah. So uh, as we can see, in control, skip that first zealot. So has two sentries out, and uh, intense's bunker placement is immaculate. I mean, it's away from the ramp so that. The Stalkers can't shoot it from the high ground without taking any damage. And he just puts his Marines in there, his low health units, and starts taking down the Nexus. And take a look at everything, man. Uh, the Harvester count, even. Eight control, ten supply down right now. Uh, the Natural is going to die for ring control. That's 400 minerals that he invested that's not going to, to finish. And uh, Intense says, okay, well... Yep. He that did, sucks for you. Yeah, he Let's did. go home. Exactly. <laughs> and he can because uh, we did get to see it here where three supply off guys, but... The 40 mark, he went ahead and did take that command center. Now, let's keep in mind, okay, he just took out a 400 mineral nexus. Furthermore, he took out a 100, 100 mineral, uh, or a 75 mineral, I'm sorry, uh, assimilator. So right there, there's so much money lost right now for in control under the first, under the 8-minute mark uh, due to, you know, this build. And as you can see, he's following up that build right now with a factory and putting down a starport right now. Yeah, and adding that reactor too, taking his second gas. So really... You know, getting his tech out, and look at in control space. He's got one robotics facility and three gateways. So really no tech at all. He's not going to make an immortal here. He's just going to go for that uh, vision with the observer. And uh, he's coming down to kind of do a little bit of a counterattack. We did have our proxy pylon try to get thrown up at the bottom left, uh, but Intense denied that. And th there's no way this army is going to break these two bunkers with repairs. Yeah, and the bunkers are perfect because of the fact that, okay, he attacked, he destroyed the Nexus, he denied, and... Um pretty much caused the, the natural to be so delayed for in control. And he knew there was a counter coming. So he ran his units back, built the bunkers, and now he's safe. And now he can go ahead and progress with uh, being so much more ahead of, of his opponent right now. And he's sitting very comfortably. Yeah. So, um, you know, he, he also made a separate call that I want to point out too. Sure. I, uh, <laughs> this is, this is something that's very commonly said, and I'm sure most of you have heard it, but I'm going to say it anyways, win behind dark shrine. So, <laughs> When the Protoss player loses his Nexus like that, the first thing Intense does is puts his expansion down and adds an engineering bay. Hmm. Uh, just in case he needs turrets, 
and uh, it, it's a smart move. I mean, that's not what In Control is going to go for here. He does go for a fast Twilight Council and fast third and fourth gas in just yeah. a sec. But, uh, I mean, look at the supply. It's it, There's a 10 difference, and there's no tech out for In Control still. None. Yeah, and as you can see right now, one upgrade, one a plus one upgrade is going down uh, for the bio uh, for Intense. And right now, Intense is sitting very comfortably. I mean, he has his medevacs right now. He has one out. Um, the addition of one more would allow his army to push out very easily. And uh, yeah, I mean, so far, Intense is looking very, very nice compared to his opponent in control, which, uh, you know, is going for the Templar Archives at this point. And, you know, doesn't really have that much. So um, I. Intense performed this build beautifully. He didn't get too greedy and hold his entire army up at the natural for the entire time. And uh, so far, I'm very in impressed by Intense uh, with the uh, two barracks fast pressure uh, for a TVP. Mm. So uh, the reason we're kind of showing you guys this build this week, uh, as we just finish this replay up real quick, there's only like a minute left, sure. uh, is because Terrans lately are like trying to find ways to beat Protoss because they're having trouble, right? So. Yep. Uh, Intense is going to load up these two medevacs and drop them in the main and run up the front at the same time and everything's going <laughs> to die and EG control is going to GG. But, um, th so this is one way that, it's an older style, but now that Protosses are being kind of greedy again, it works uh, yeah. again. So, uh, there's this, and then there's like the three CC build, like with one gateway or whatever. That's a little bit gimmicky and you can't really hold a lot of stuff if they try to like seven gate all in you or whatever. But, uh, there was the GG and... Yeah, man. You gotta warn me when we turn that camera back on. <laughs> like, camera's coming back on. Up. You best be ready, boy. Here it comes. <laughs> well, anyways, yeah. Uh, perfect game to start out with there. Very basic. Nothing too, too crazy. Um, the next game we're actually going to be running into is Alicia. Um, no surprise there. Everyone should know Alicia, uh, just with recent uh, placement uh, in the tournaments. Versus NSH Sting. Um, NSO. So. But can you reset the sound real quick on Exploit? I think it's bugging. Sure. No problem. Gotta love Xsplit. All right, that should be better, guys. Uh, definitely take a look there. Does Buddha sound beautiful? Say something, Buddha. Say something. For do me. I do I sound beautiful now, you guys? <laughs> Are we all happy? I hope we're happy. Sorry. Keep letting us know about any Xsplit issues or whatever. Hopefully, it looks better. Yeah, we'll wait there. Oh, looks like I guess the smileys are better, better, right? Okay. Yeah, that's unfortunately not something like. Our fault, we have to say, um, XSplit, unfortunately, I'm not the only one that has that issue. I think Buddha, you've had it too, for some reason. And and the fix that Buddha actually turned me on to, if you guys run into it too, is just to mute all your audio and then unmute it. In XSplit, in XSplit, not like on your computer or yep. whatever. Yeah. Just hit that little mute button and then turn it off and it fixes it. I don't understand why, but... <laughs> Excellent. Sounds good. Well, let's go ahead and jump into game two. Buddha, you all loaded up? I am indeed. Okay, let's go ahead and start in three, two, and one. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we do have our yellow Terran being represented by Sting. And at the top left, we do have Slayer's Alicia, the guy that got second place today in MLG. Uh, again, we spoiled results at the beginning, so I'm sorry <laughs> if you weren't here for that and heard spoiler alert. But uh, yeah, we're going to be on the Tombed Valley here, which a lot of Terran players think is actually a very good Protoss map. Uh, and I tend to agree. In, in TVP, this is a very good Protoss map. Very easy third base to take. Not a lot of area to drop on the corners of the map here. Uh, your base very easily defendable yep. with two two ramps and a very easy connection between the two. So uh, a very good Protoss map. And so basically all the games from here, because I went through the Korean IPL qualifiers, okay. and every Terran on this map two racks because they didn't want to play on it. They, they wanted to do pressure. They didn't want to let Protoss do their... Three gates and then three expansion build or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna see the same basic build come out of Sting at the beginning here, and then we're gonna see what kind of variations he does to make this uh, his own style. Excellent, excellent. Well, I can't wait to see that here once again. Following the cookie cutter build here, ten supply depot, and we are gonna see a twelve barracks. Not actually walling it off there, uh, kind of sitting a little bit farther back. Um, and a lot of higher level players will do that as long as their marine uh, micro is very high. Uh, you know, you can catch that probe early enough to kill it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we do see that. And 13 refinery. Yeah, and on top of that, uh, that's a good point. The the marine control is important. But in these positions, if he puts his barracks at the front, he actually can't put the attachment down because of the supply deep placement. So yeah, um, yep. keeps you from having to float your barracks for a half second or whatever. And every second counts, especially when you're trying to open up with this pressure. Mm. Um, so good decision on his part there. Um, so once again, that refinery is completed, and uh, we will see that barracks finish up any second now. A marine come out, and also that orbital command here. 
And there we go. There's that Marine. And we should see the Orbital Command just at the very end of this SCV. And I like the... And uh, let's see. There it is. Perfect. All right. So one thing I do want to point out about the two racks is you don't need that second depot right away because we're going to Orbital and we're adding a uh, reactor right away. And those both take a long time to make. So we actually have no production here at 17 Supply. You can start your depot after. And uh, as we can see, that just saves you that little bit of time so that your second barracks can come up a lot faster. Yep. Yep. No, that's a very, very good point, actually. Uh, we actually, I think last replay we saw that, too, was the supply depot after that second barracks was started, um, just because you're not... And you always should. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, that's a very, very good point, actually. Um, so we do have a probe coming up the ramp here to get some scouting completed. Uh, Marine is sitting on the ramp, and right away he reacts, uh, which is a beautiful job. He's denying that scouting. So if we go ahead and look at Alicia's view right now, Alicia sees nothing. He has no yeah. clue what's going on. And this is actually really bad for Alicia because he scouted so late. He's going to have no idea what he's up against. And reacting to a gas build as opposed to a gas list build can be completely different, especially since Sting scouted uh, the correct position first and sees that Alicia went double gas before adding gates or a robo. So he knows that Alicia is going to be very sentry heavy. Yep. And uh, even though he opened with this build kind of blindly, he's now going to know, okay, I have, I have a big timing here because he's not going to have a lot of units out very quickly. Yep. So right away we do have the tech lab being completed uh, for Sting, and he has started the concussive shell here. So right over right now we're at four, or five Marines, and uh, we will have our first Marauder out here. And uh, by the time that these units actually hit, that concussive shell will be completed. Yeah. So uh, we can see Alicia poking up with the stalker. He wants to get vision of that natural as best as he can, but yeah. Sting doing a great job of denying it. So Alicia still has no idea what he's up against. I mean, uh, there are five Marines out front. That's a pretty standard number for this point in time. Uh, so, as we can see, Sting is hiding the rest of the units at the top of his ramp to, to deny vision to Alicia, and he's hiding that Marauder for sure. Definitely doesn't want to give that away. And we see Stim start up right away afterwards, and now we're going to see Sting uh, scout with his SCV, see that there's a sentry on top of the ramp, and uh, he's going to know he's got a little bit of a timing he can hit here. Yeah, and, and that's oh, it's such... High level play there, you know, keeping your marauders back. Because the second that Stalker scouts the marauder, he knows, okay, there's a second barracks. Okay, I know there's a tech lab. So right away, the, the Alicia knows what he's going against there. So it's just such high level play that you see out of these players. Um, mm. Knowing these little tiny things, which to me or, or other players wouldn't really matter. But right here, it just shows evidence, um, you know, what they're kind of doing and their strategy there. Yeah, so... Uh as we can see, Sting took the tower, and as soon as he saw that there was no scout out for Alicia and that the only stalker on the map had died, pulls SCVs and says, all right, we're doing this. He doesn't know that I'm coming. So as we can see, uh, no Chrono Boost going down on these warp gates. There's not going to be a lot of units out. Sting's going to push up with one SCV just to make sure there's not three sentries here to force field this whole army off. And as soon as he sees that, he runs up, and uh, we're going to see a lot of damage go down here. Yep. And right away, he goes right for those probes, which is going to affect Alicia's economy so well and cleans up most of those probes there, and it's just going to focus on the Nexus. And as you can see right away, look what he does. He returns those SCVs back because they've done what they needed to do. Exactly what they needed to do. They added that early pressure. They were very effective here, and that Nexus will go down. All right, so uh, now we can see he kind of wants to poke up, but he doesn't want to poke too far. And yep. uh, he's going to like kind of try to focus down a couple of units here. He does get a Stalker. No big deal, though. And uh, here he should go home, because there are enough sentries here to force field him for a long time. Yep. And, uh, yeah, this is a little bit of an overcommitment. He's going to lose these Marines basically for free here. Uh, yeah, I but, like the fact that he had the Marauder go up the ramp originally, because the Marauder can take the additional damage mm -hmm. compared to a Marine. Yeah. So, you know, he does have a little bit more vision than he would previously. But a little bit, as you said, he, he, he kind of overstayed his welcome there. Not really necessary with that many sentries. Um, and he's returning home. But right away, he's done his damage. Um, and right now, Alicia is behind when it comes to the economy. Now, how he has kind of moved on from that, he's gone ahead and made his command center, as we talked about earlier. He's making his factory, and he is going ahead and taking that second gas. So uh, it looks like he's going to follow up with a much higher bio play, as we are seeing a third barracks going down. Mm. Yeah, so um, really standard play out of uh, Sting here, really, and making really good reads, right? And Alicia, as soon as he saw that army come up, he was like, oh, I can't hold this. Yeah. Tries to pull everything to the top of his ramp. And honestly, while he didn't get a good read because he didn't scout early enough, he did a good job holding. He didn't die, right? And there were enough units to kill him if he didn't micro or make good decisions. Yeah. So um, he did a good job, and it looks like he's just going to go for two-base Colossus here. 
and uh, you know he knows he's behind, so he's just doing whatever he can. But uh, basically, this game is going to continue on for a little bit. Sting is going to destroy Alicia, mm -hmm. and uh, that is going to be the game. So uh, do we want to hop into replay number three? Sounds good. Let me jump out of this one real quick here. And uh, we'll go into game number three. Once again, guys, if you guys have, like, any questions, uh, we will try to, you know, take them as we're going through the show. If you post them in chat, you know, hey, why do you do this or why is this going on? Because if we miss something, you know, please let us know. We definitely want to point it out to the rest of our audience. But if for some reason your question gets overlooked or you think of something a little bit later, um, please go ahead and email us. Uh, you can check out all of our information right below uh, in the info tab there. And, um, you know... Feel free to shoot us an email. Uh, we'll get back to you within the day. Tweet at us. Tweet, exactly. Yes, uh, definitely check us out on Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter, uh, definitely please do. Um, we are on Twitter a lot. Uh, so we do welcome that. We do post every time our replays. Our, our, our VODs actually are up on YouTube. Um, so make sure you guys check that out. And uh, it looks like we will have, um, this is game number three, which is actually I am Seed versus MKP. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, I'm in the replay. Are you? Yes, sir. All right, we are going to start in three, two, and one. And in the upper right hand corner, we do have our Teal Protoss player represented by IM's Seed. And in the bottom right hand corner, we do have the Red Terran player being represented by no other than that little player, Marine King Prime. And, uh, yeah, this game's going to be a little bit different, and we're going to see uh, kind of the difference on the same map, same positions. I mean, they were on the left before, but now they're still vertical on the right. Uh, we're going to see the same positions, same build out of Marine King that we just saw out of uh, 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 memory, memory, and it's also <laughs> Sting. Yes. But uh, we're actually going to see Seed Scout much quicker, and we're going to see how he reacts, because it's awesome. So right off the All back right. here, we do have Marine King Prime. Uh, whoa, can't even say his name. Wow, Marine King Prime uh, putting down a supply King depot here at the ten mark, um, and uh, wasn't doing anything too crazy uh, as of right now. Uh, Protoss player here going ahead and putting down his nine supply depot and doing a little chrono boost there on his nexus for the additional uh, harvester count at this point in the game. Yeah, so uh, we're just gonna see him thirteen gate here, and uh, then he's gonna go ahead and scout right away. And uh, just in case any of you are like playing in tournaments and stuff and don't actually know this about this map, this map is not forced cross positions, but it is forced not close third positions. And I've said this before, but it, you just can't spawn horizontally. You can spawn cross or vertically. Yep. So um, definitely keep that in mind. And that's why we see these players scout the correct location every single time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you can always know it's one of those maps because you do have a supply depot at the bottom mm -hmm. of the ramp. Um, so right now we do have the 12 barracks, 13 gas going down, and right away Seed is going to get a very nice scout in here. Know that there's nothing too, too crazy coming out of Marine King Prime at this point. I mean, this is pretty typical for a Terran. Um, so uh, almost loses that SCV, actually. Wow, I was uh, pretty surprised he let the health go that long. And, yeah, oh, man, he's he like, just, yeah, he gets I'm a Marine repair. I don't need SCVs. <laughs> I'm a <make> Marine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the Orbital Command is getting started along with his first Marine, actually. All right, so let's talk about this already. Seed taking a very fast second gas as soon as he sees that gas. And uh, we do have a reactor coming down and that second barracks right away. So uh, we're going to see what he uses this second gas for because he is not going to one gate expand, which I'm sure his plan was. Uh, one gate expanding, of course, the meta game. It, it really is. But when you see a Terran player take a gas, you know that you don't have to play as economically greedy, I yep. guess is what I'll call it. Yeah. Uh, and you can still be in a favorable position uh, simply because your opponent is also spending money on tech stuff. Yeah, and uh, actually interesting here, you actually do see a third Supply Depot going a bit down uh, for Marine King Prime here. Um, and uh, it's definitely going to put him ahead quite a bit so early, uh, one thing I noticed, which what this does is allow him to pump out unit, put invest in his army count uh, very quickly. Because uh, as you can see right now, 22 to 35, so that is quite the leap there. Uh, when it comes to a supply and uh, we are going to see that second barracks complete and right away at 100 percent we do see a tech lab go down and uh the stalker is going to deny this scv scout and the scv is actually not going to see the robotics facility that we have up so uh a very fast robo out of seed here and mkp really doesn't know what he's up against so yeah. uh you know he doesn't really have a read on oh are you uh 
like, are you double gassing here? Are you going to void ray all in me? I don't really know. Yeah. He's just going to bank up a bunch of units here. And instead of going for a concussive shell, he goes for stim because he's not going to apply that same early pressure quite as early this time. Yeah, definitely. And the, I can see why, though. I mean, he doesn't know what his opponent's going. Um, so he's kind of a little unsure there. And when you see double gas, you know Protoss is up to no good. Um, you know, he did see that there was no expansion. So he kind of has to assume that, you know, he is going to see some early aggression out of his Protoss mm. opponent, IM Seed, just because of the fact of not being able to scout enough. Yeah, and another thing that MKP did really well is, um, well, we're going to see it here, actually, I think. MKP is going to expand here at round 40 supply again, yep. that very standard timing. And with his first SCV, he actually checked the natural of Seed and said, there's no probe down here. There's no nexus. I don't see one coming down when I walk up. So, uh, you know, that that's definitely a conscious decision he made. And uh, basically everything is looking pretty normal in this game so far. I mean, uh, we have a second gas coming down for MKP. And Seed really is just, you know, making units off of these two gates, making sure he's not going to die. His observer gets down here, sees the expansion, and immediately we're going to see a probe come down and expand. There it is. <laughs> I was just waiting for it. Yeah, I gotta write these times down. That's right. That's right. I know it's kind of difficult, especially when we're not viewing the exact replay as the other person. You know, it's kind of um, gotta love Blizzard. Thank you very much, Blizzard. But anyway, jumping back in the game here. Uh, so once again, as we talked about the, at the top of the show, guys, um, this is the two racks early pressure type of timing, but it's a different variation. So the first two games we saw that early pressure. Well, this is at two racks, but moved into a different variation and it's very wise though like you need to scout you need to scout so if you scout and you run into similar situations do not push out right away uh, because you need to have all the information you can before you add any type of pressure to your opponent yeah blindly all inning is not really a good way to play ever but it looks like marine key's gonna come up and apply a little bit of pressure at the front and see man he's got so many sentries here it's gonna be pretty hard to break him yeah sentries are very very deadly uh, especially when it comes to ramps uh, a big difference between StarCraft, the original, and, and Brood War, and StarCraft 2. Um, sentries and ramps are Protoss's best friend. So do not push into that uh, without having the additional vision, without having a medevac drop or anything like that uh, at your fingertips. I say go for it, lose a bunch of times, and then figure it out for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. So he's following up. He did build uh, an additional barracks here. Uh, it's Marine King Cry. You know he's going to go Marine Heavy. Uh, and what he's doing here is he's moving into medevac play here. One, this is going to allow him to drop, and two, this is going to reinforce his army uh, with those medevacs. So right away, uh, he is using the, the factory most likely um, as a tool when attacking into a Protoss army. Um, and on, on top of that, then we do have medevacs coming out right away. And he is sitting on the two, gra ga or two gas right now and moving into a third, actually, for Marine King Prime. Yeah, so uh, basically we're at a point in the game where Seed is getting blink. He's getting his tech out, hasn't taken any damage yet, has a Harvester lead, is on the same number of bases as Marine King, and uh, tech-wise, they're about even here. So, uh, you know, uh, there's there's not a big difference in this game. Seed is in a pretty good position here. Uh, and let's just see what happens with this first fight, I guess. Yeah, let's do that. What time are you at? I am at 9.55. Oh, perfect. We were, like, yeah, right on top. Yeah, right on top of it there. And so we do have Marine King Prime at the bottom of the ramp right now. Um, and uh, it looks like he's going to force his way up the ramp, and most likely we'll see force field right away. Oh, no, not yet. Okay, there we go. Force field and guardian shield, which is a huge perk of having um, several sentries there. And uh, we do have some of the Marines at, on the other side of the force field, but beautiful placement by Marine King. Picks them up, returns them back to safety. Yeah, see, man, he, he force field a good no, chunk off, and then he backed up so the back units couldn't hit him. Yep. And uh, as we can see, he's trading really efficiently here. He was yeah. down in supply because Protoss units are stronger by supply. Yep. And, uh, yeah, he's he's evened it out now. So Seed's still in a very good position. His blink is about to finish so he can handle drops a lot easier. And uh, he's going to, I mean, I think he's going to crush through this army. Yeah, I really yeah, remember. I mean, I don't do not see why not right now. I mean, he's doing a beautiful job here. I love the micro by Marine King. Like, he pushed his army up the ramp and then pulled it back but left three units because he knew the force fields were going to follow like half a second later, and, and they did. So, I mean, it's just, it's so impressive to watch uh, these high level players uh, as, as under such a microscope and see these differences here. So, right away, uh, Marine King does do a lot of damage to his opponent here. And as you can see, he's taking his third uh, because he, he did exactly what he needed to. He added that pressure. He took out his opponent's, uh, most of his opponent's army, actually, 
and I think quite a few probes there. Uh, let's go ahead and see here. Uh, units killed. And uh, four. there we go. Good microphone. Wow. Yep. So, all right. Uh, I think I think we're about done with this. So this this was one of the uh, seed held this replays kind of yep. and a little variation from Marine King based on his scouting and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I think we can go ahead and hop out and. While Seed took a lot of damage, um, if you guys play against Marine King on the ladder and he micros like that against you, I'm really sorry. I can't help you. Yeah, um, seriously. There's only so much I can do. And uh, micro is <laughs> not my thing. Oh. Making a lot of stuff. Is. That kid's going to have such bad arthritis when he gets older. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. If you if you keep doing it and you condition yourself, oh, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be one of those people that has like huge, giant like muscles in their fingers because they're just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Sounds good. All right. I think we're jumping into uh, game number four, which is going to be I am first versus I am Yoda. Is that correct? Oh, dude. Okay. That's who first is. So today <laughs> or this this weekend in MLG first lost his first game and then got back to the winner's bracket like by beating 17 people in a row or something ridiculous. Something disgusting. So. Yeah. Yeah, first is actually really, really, really good apparently, <laughs> and uh, I was just looking for replays and I found this, and so uh, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be a different variation on this build, not going to be the same. So you ready, Octane? I am ready, starting in three, two, and one. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we do have the yellow Protoss player being represented by I am's first. And at the top right, we have the blue Terran player, I am Yoda, and uh, Yoda's. Uh, how do I? He's not like well known, but he's got some notoriety. Man, he plays in the GSTL a lot. I'm sure everybody or a lot of people have heard of him, especially with his name, right? Like that's a name you remember. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna see a TVP here, and this is a, again what I was talking about on Two Valley, where we have Terran players that just don't want to play on this map most of the time against the Protoss player. They know the Protoss player is gonna be greedy, and uh, basically we're gonna see him do like the craziest all in I have ever seen in my entire life, <laughs> and I thought it was like. At first, I was going, I was going, okay, that was a cool build. He must have, and then I kept going through replays, and I kept finding people doing the same build. So, uh, I tried it on ladder, and I won. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, uh, this is really awesome, man. I don't know how many people have seen this before. Let me know in the chat if you've seen this, but uh, this is really, really cool. So, right away, we do have our 10 Supply Depot going down for IM Geota here, and here comes that 12 Barracks at the top of that ramp there. Um, and... Uh, I'm interested to see this. I have not watched this replay in full yet. I know. I'm bad. I know. Come on now. Lack of preparation. <laughs> Terrible person. Terrible. Anyways. Stop um, visiting your parents. Please. I know. I know. I went visiting my parents this weekend. Didn't get to watch all of MLG. I guess it's okay, though, because I'm going to MLG Raleigh in a few weeks. So I'm going to make up for it. I promise. Um, three MLGs in one year. That's right. That's right. You. I hate you. And That's the one you didn't come to is the one I was at. So I know. I, Columbus, I Providence, and then it'll be Raleigh. So can't I, wait. So right away, okay, we do see that I am first actually scouts in the upper left-hand corner here first, uh, and then we'll be scouting in the proper position, which is that uh, opposite direction as um, actually Bubba, Bubba, wow, you're Bubba now, um, as Buddha had talked about here, and wow. uh, yeah, I know, seriously, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we do have the Marine coming out right away, and uh, we will see the Orbital Command uh, getting started along with that gas is completed here. So everything's pretty typical. So we're kind of waiting for that crazy variation that Buddha was talking about. Yep, and uh, first gets up the ramp, sees that there is a barracks here, and gets in and sees the gas. Very important. Now he knows that, well, it's not a one rack expand. Yep. So he knows to expect something to be done with that gas very yep. early. And uh, he's actually just going to go ahead and one gate expand anyways, because you can get away with a one gate expand in a lot of cases, yeah. uh, especially in cross positions. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, as we can see, Yoda put a barracks down at the bottom of his base, and uh, first actually saw it. But yeah. uh, we're just going to have a two racks to start here. Yeah, I was actually kind of surprised as I was watching that. I was like, okay, maybe he doesn't see that second barracks, and that's why this is so crazy. Can but you fix my sound, please? Again? Oh, I love XSplit. I love you, XSplit. All right, Buddha's sound should be better. We love XSplit. Love you long time. All right, All right, so we well, do see the tech lab going down uh, for Yoda here, and right now he's just sitting on a typical two racks combination at this point. Yeah, so first actually went Robo here, so I'm like looking at my notes trying to remember what happened. Yeah, no problem. Oh yeah, so he goes into two gate Robo. Okay, so this is something that we saw Seed do last game, right, as his response. So, uh, and they're both on IM, so 
uh, clearly there's they're they're talking to each other, which they should because they're on the same team. Yeah. But uh, we have a second gas coming up for Yoda here, and we have Stim started instead of concussive shell for Yoda, uh, sitting at the top of his ramp, you know, making sure no stalker comes up and harasses him or anything like that. And uh, yeah, this second gas is gonna be really cool, you guys. I promise. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm waiting. What are we gonna see? <clears throat> so right away, that second gas does go down there. He does have three SCVs on it, um, and uh, on top of that, here we do see Marines getting pumped out here, and they're actually being sent across the map with one Marauder and five Marines with one SCV, which we saw this several times uh, before this match. So nothing too crazy thus far. Um, but what do we see next? A factory going down right away. Mm -hmm. uh, someone in the chat saying they use this a lot, and uh, yeah, it's really good actually. If you have Additional replays of this. If you want to send them to me, I'll uh, I'll take a look at them and stuff. Cause uh, I'd I'd like to see more replays of this and not have to search through five hundred thousand replays. But yes. uh, Yoda's gonna push up here. See that there is no expansion from first. He's gonna be like, uh oh. <laughs> he <laughs> turns okay. around and goes home. He doesn't know what's going on here. Uh, but we do again have that two gate robo, and there is going to be an expansion pretty quickly from first here. Um, and first is scouting the natural Yoda, seeing that there is no base down here. So he's like. Okay, what are you up to? What are you up to? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So both players know that there's some early aggression coming out onto the field here. Uh, and actually, we do see an observer for IM first actually going in to see what's going on. And right away, what do we see here? We see a factory with a tech lab, and we do see that starport. So what does that mean? We're going to see Banshees. Yeah, uh, that's actually not what we're going to see, but a good guess. That's well, what I expected, too. Exactly, yep. because the observer is going to be coming into the base right here. So as your opponent, you're going to be expecting, okay, you know, I do see it. Most likely to see a swap and see some Banshee play. You know, a lot of players will do that to kind of keep the Protoss player in their base. Um, mm. You know, that Banshee harassment doesn't allow the army to push out here. So right away, if I was IM first, uh, I would definitely expect that. Uh, so we'll have to see kind of how he reacts to that at this point. Indeed. Uh, so that Observer does get in, and it sees that the Siege tank thing is under... Well, it doesn't <laughs> see that it's Siege tank production, but tech you can be pretty sure at this point. It's a it's a siege tank in siege mode coming out. Yep. So, yep. Uh, Yoda is currently up like 11 or 12 supply because first decided to expand, and so first here is actually going to put down a robotics bay very quickly because uh, he knows what this build is. He knows it's going to have a lot of range and stuff like that. So uh, he did get out one immortal, I think. Yeah, and now he's going straight for Colossus, not bothering to get range because it's too much gas. And uh, this is a pretty good response because of the number of marines that are going to be out, uh, but. You know, we'll, we'll see how the positioning and everything works and uh, exactly how both players execute their plans. Right now, I am first having a ton of vision on his opponent, seeing everything he's doing. He knows exactly what he's going up against, actually, at this point here. He knows it's a Marine-heavy army. So as you said earlier, very nice response with that Colossus there with the two tanks. Um, and it looks like the siege mode is completed here. So uh, as of right now, I mean, I am Yoda is sitting very comfortably with his army uh, count here. Uh, actually quite large at this point versus, you know, just a small ball by I am first. Yeah, he is pulling eight SCVs at this point. He's got uh, one medevac out and two siege tanks with siege mode. But right now, keep in mind, guys, Yoda is on a clock, right? He doesn't, he, he knows that he's on one base. He knows his opponent's on two bases. So he's saying to himself, okay, I got to get something done pretty soon here. I'm going to mine out and uh, this production is really going to cut in. But good job by first. Baiting or killing off a few Marines there, but uh, taking a tank shot was not very good. Yeah. So. Bum, ba, da, boom. The medevac now timing is perfect here, though. Perfect. Oh, yeah. No, they rallied like completely to the right spot and everything. So we see these tanks sieging up, uh, you know, out of range, just defending that ramp, making sure that first can't come down the ramp. And we're going to see some bunkers get started here from Yoda. And this is actually really cool in my eyes. I mean, he's basically siege tank pushing. A Protoss opponent with bunkers, <laughs> like like he, it's like he's defending his base, but then he's pushing his defense forward, and it's yeah. kind of crazy. What do you mean, what? siege tanks versus Protoss? Oh, it's a sin. It's a sin, but it works. Hey man, hey, beyond oh, gods of the semifinals, going tank marine against Protoss. I'm I'm happy to look into it. This is it was really awesome. Oh, I know. Prior to like the past few weeks, though, I feel like everyone who saw a Terran player go with tanks versus Protoss was like tisk tisk, like come on or, now. Or one one or something. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right, so uh, we do see first with two Colossus out here. He's making a second Immortal, and uh, uh, or sorry, a third Immortal, actually. And, uh, you know, Yoda doing a really good job positioning everything perfectly, just, you know, trying to bait out some force yep. fields, do a little bit of damage, snipe a sentry if he can, anything anything he can kind of do at this point. And first, 
taking a pretty big supply lead, but, you know, there's a lot of tanks out here for Yoda. They do a lot of damage to this kind of army. Yeah, and believe it or not, a lot of people might be going, well, how come he doesn't have any Vikings? I mean, look how effective he is against this Colossus army with no Vikings at all. Uh, I mean, a lot of Terran players, as soon as they see Colossus, they're like, oh, okay, going straight for Vikings. But here, tank placement's perfect. Yeah, and as we can see, a huge engagement goes down. Everything basically gets cleaned up on both sides, but first actually just cannot... He doesn't have enough stuff, and Yoda chases him back up his ramp and uh, kills off Immortals, kills off all the rest of the army here, and first is actually going to lose this game to a very powerful build that, you know, he was kind of reacting well to. He, he did the right counter. He made Immortals. He made Colossus. He made Gateway units that were going to spread themselves out with Guardian Shield and all that stuff, but uh, a very powerful, still one base build off of Yoda uh, as he's kind of starting to mine out a little bit here he is uh, going to end the game. Yeah, a uh, very nice job on I Am Yoda's part. The bunkers were perfect because what the bunkers did was it allowed the uh, Marines the Marines to last a little bit longer, just long enough for the DPS and allow the tanks to pretty much do that huge shell damage and splash damage versus the Protoss player. And that's what it did. And so very nice job by I Am Yoda. And uh, should we move on to, do we have a next game here or are we all done? Yes, sir. We have one Sounds more. Good. Excellent. Sounds good. So let's go ahead and jump out of this one here. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have. Um, once again, guys, all of our replays are actually up on YouTube. Um, so please make sure you guys do check that out. Um, you can see all the games, um, you know, all of our previous shows. Um, so you guys can go ahead and check that out. We are only into episode four so far. So we have a ton to bring you guys uh, in the next few weeks here. Um, I know next week is Geniuses plus two plus two um, Colossus timing. Um, and then after that, we actually have Bombers TBP. So uh, make sure you guys do check that out as well in the next few weeks. Let me just also say, if there's anyone in here that's seen the 2-2 Colossus timing uh, from Genius against Terran, if you have a replay of it, send it to me, please. I I really need it, seriously. Like, <laughs> it's going to be hard to find replays for this one. So uh, I'm going to be digging all week. And if you have one, please send it to me so I can at least look at it and... Uh, yeah, uh, are you ready, Octane? I am in game and ready. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started in three, two, and one. And in the I'm up actually gonna go ahead. I'm actually gonna go ahead and fast forward through this because it's the exact same build we just saw. Okay. Um, and this is I am Seed versus uh, Zenix Run. Um, yes. And uh, what time would you like us to fast forward to? I will uh, let you know in a second. <laughs> well, that's fine. Take your time. No big deal. Um, you know. It's kind of nice to see something a little bit different. And I haven't seen that enough, and I really like that, so I'm actually going to start practicing that build a little bit more. Um, and uh, it's kind of, I mean, it's its kind of a very large commitment there. Um, if it's not extremely successful, you're kind of in trouble. Like, as you talked about there, uh, the Terran player was almost mined out at that point. But from what it looked like, the tank placement and the bunker placement came down to a lot of that build. So uh, in this particular game, he notices that the Terran hasn't taken another base with his observer, with his observer or whatever. Yep. And so he just he's like, "All right, I don't need to take a Nexus then. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> I got four gates and I'm making Colossus off one base. Let's do this." And so as we can see, he's gonna have. To oh shoot, uh, I should pause because I'm not streaming, right? You yeah, are streaming, what so time? we need to get to the nine minute and thirty second mark. Here. Oh man! All right, well I'm at the five minute mark here, so give us a second. Um, so as Buddha talked about, we are seeing pretty typical, uh, kind of the same build here as we did before. We're right around the 630 mark right now. So we are catching up there. Um, but yeah, as you said, uh, extremely similar actually uh, to what we just saw there. Right about the eight minute mark here. So we should be coming up onto that timing in just a second here. And alrighty, I am at the nine minute mark here. And hang on. Oh, here. sorry, 930. 930. Man, he's just, he does, he makes my life so difficult, I swear. All right, I'm exactly, wee, 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 wee. exactly at the 930 mark. So I am starting in three, two, and one. All right, so as we can see, Seed gets his first Colossus out with one Immortal, a lot of Zealots, a couple centuries. And uh, basically, Xanax Run is going to do the exact same thing we just saw uh, our last Terran do. And uh, he's just going to Siege up outside. He's going to maybe start some bunkers, whatever. Not a big deal. We're not all that concerned with it. We All we see is a second Colossus coming out here. And... Uh, we're going to see how Seed decides to engage it, because it's a little bit different than uh, our previous Terran did. Yeah, and actually, we actually are seeing Vikings coming out uh, for Xenix Run. Um, so he is opting to, you know, instead of putting uh, additional time in production into oh. Medivacs. Pause. Pause. Sorry. Go for it. What do you yeah, got? Yeah, no, 
because that that was the big deal that we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, now we have to be. <laughs> uh, where are you? I'm at ten ten now. Ten ten. Uh, oh wow. Okay. Uh, I'm ten ten going in three two and one. So we are at ten ten. All right. So watch this. His immortal is gonna come forwards by itself here in just a sec. And it's going to tank three tank shots, four tank shots, five tank shots, six. And all of his army gets up into range without taking any tank fire. Yeah. And then all of his Colossus cleaning up the Marines very quickly. His force wow. fields keep all the Marines back off of his Colossus. And uh, look at the supply now. It's now 70 to 58. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yep. dude, yeah. That was actually really impressive uh, compared to the last, you know, type of setup that our, our, um, our Protoss player did that time. That was very, very smart on his part. I mean, it's oh, that was so good, so good. All right, well, Seed sees that the tanks are on Siege, moves up and gets a couple of swipes on those Marines. Tanks are sieging back up, and he's like, oh, God, and he runs back up his <laughs> ramp. Yeah, that Viking is going to add the vision. It's furthermore going to add that additional range necessary to kind of do an additional damage to the Colossi there. And uh, we are seeing that the bunker most likely will get moved up here. And uh, right now doing a really nice job. He is denying the Protoss player from taking that Nexus and progressing out. We do see Thermalance actually getting uh, research for IMC. Very wise choice on his part. And uh, as of right now, this is the exact same spot that we were in pretty much last game uh, with our other opponent there, uh, which was, who was that? Uh, I am Yoda. Yeah, and this is, it's very similar, you're right, but it's a little bit different. We don't have that second base for Seed, so he's saved those 400 minerals, didn't make those extra probes, but didn't get that extra income. So, um, it's definitely a different decision he's making here, and as we can see, he's got two, yep. three Colossus out there all hiding in the Protoss buildings. <laughs> and uh, then he's getting one Immortal here and overcommitting with his Stalkers, really bad, but... Uh, yeah, that four, that four Siege Tank line is just so powerful right there, I mean... Those two stalkers uh, were so close to, to, to biting the dust there, and uh, he's doing a really nice job. I'm surprised, actually, at this point, we haven't seen Xenix run take um, his natural. Uh, I mean, I guess he kind of knows he has this game in the bag. It's just, you know, any any moment here. Well, um, it, sorry, here comes the Immortal again, and yep. it's going to tank all the tank fire. All the Colossus come up and immediately start targeting down all of the Marines, all of the Siege Tanks. The Zealots get wow. down the ramp and Seed crushes through this army. Wow, those Zealots were able to get down the ramp into the tanks before they were even able to completely kill off that Immortal. And that is beautiful play and timing. And I just, I mean, amazing job by IM Seed for coming up with that strategy versus this. I mean, he must hit this on the ladder so often. Uh, and that Immortal timing and adjustment mm -hmm. to his play is very powerful. So patient. And as we can see, he's got warped in uh, stalkers on the low ground now, cutting off the the retreat path for these units. And uh, basically, this is this is something else that um, you know that that some of the pro analysts uh, an analysts, <laughs> analysts pro yes. analysts talk about, like day nine. He said he's said this a lot in the past. He says, "Look, if your opponent's all in you, that doesn't mean you have to expand and take an economic advantage. If you counter his all in with your all in." Like, even if it's a defensive all-in and you yeah. don't expand, you just make what beats his army, and then you crush him, you can just counterattack and win. You just have to know when you can attack, you have to be patient, and you have to execute perfectly. And that's exactly what happened here, as we can see. Yeah, I mean, uh, by the Protoss player, I mean, we emphasize this every time we do this show, is scouting. Um, you know, uh, when it comes down to the Terran player, you know, the scouting means a ton. We saw in the Marine King, uh, Marine King Prime game, actually, his scouting is Terran versus his opponent, allowed him to see, okay, I'm just opening up with a two barracks type of timing, but I'm not going to pressure off of that. Um, versus some of the other builds where we did see the Terran player get the full scouting, so he knew that he was safe with what he was going when he did see that Nexus first or the one gate into Nexus. So um, it all comes down to scouting, guys. We can't emphasize it enough, especially on the flip side when you are trying to scout out what your opponent's going. Right away when you see that gas, that's one thing to pay attention for if you're a Protoss player scouting um, your Terran opponent. And then the second thing there, of course, is seeing that second barracks all before you actually see any... Uh, command center getting put down anything else that uh, you should kind of keep an eye on there buddha that you're thinking of no man uh if you if you missed the beginning of the show for how this build is utilized and stuff please go check out the vod uh youtube.com slash the strategist tv and uh yeah hopefully uh you guys learned a lot if you have any suggestions and stuff uh, i know we're gonna have all our contact info up so that you can contact us 
<laughs> Definitely. Repetition. Also, also wanted to let you guys know uh, before we do uh, go ahead and end the show here. Actually, want to point you guys over as we talked about at the top of the show. Uh, TweakedAudio.com actually uh, this past week has sponsored the Strategist, so please go ahead and check them out. Uh, they make some amazing gaming uh, music and voice um, uh, earbuds. So make sure you check that out. Some amazing headphones there. Uh, they're noise reducing design. Uh, compatible with your smartphone, with your MP3 player. I actually bring and use uh, similar ones to the gym, and they, and they do amazing. Um, they're engineered for durability. They're not some really cheap earbuds. And finally, you have a lifetime warranty. How often do you have a set of earbuds, and you break them, or you lose a part of it, or you break a cable? You have a lifetime warranty. So you can definitely you know take advantage of that. So once again, that's 30% off plus shipping if you actually go and use the promo code build order. So that's tweakedaudio.com, um, and we look forward to actually, um, in the next couple of shows, we're actually going to review some of these earbuds so you guys can see them actually in person on the show, um, and we'll actually in have person, an opportunity. on the show? Oh, blah, 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 blah. whatever. It's can, like, we say, can we say in person if we're online, like, with yes, our webcams? It's in Does that work? It's in person, yes. You're seeing this All in right. person. Come on. All right. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> we have a lot of fun on this show. Come on, guys. It's not super, super serious. We like to have a lot of fun. But anyways, make sure you check that out. Tweakedaudio.com, 30% off, plus free shipping. Use the promo code build order. And, uh, yeah, we really do appreciate Tweaked Audio um, kind of joining us um, in this journey here to, to benefit you guys, uh, the StarCraft II community. All, All right. right. Well, uh, for next week, we are going to cover Genius's 2-2 two, two Colossus, 2-base, two 3 Colossus push, uh, which has a lot of stalkers and blink and all sorts of really cool stuff. It's an all-in. And uh, hopefully I can find a lot of replays for it. If I can't, I'm sorry. We might have to just go ahead and skip it and try to come back to it later, maybe. Uh, but I'll do my best to find replays for that. And uh, in the meantime, if you guys have a build you want to request, or you want to give us some suggestions, or you want to say, good job, or whatever, uh, please contact us at... I'm hoping Octane is paying attention to me. I am paying attention. Make sure you, you check us so out. If you, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, make sure that you guys do check this show out, show out live, which is actually Sunday, every Sunday. 10 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash TV. For those of you that actually are in the Twitch channel right now and uh, you are checking this out live, make sure you go check us out on YouTube and check out all of our shows, youtube.com slash TheStrategistTV. Finally, if you want to see all the news coming from the show, when we go live, when our replays are up, check us out on Twitter, which is TheStrategistTV. And then finally, as Buddha talked about, um, send us an email, guys. Let us know how we're doing. Um, you know, suggest some builds, suggest some replays to us, which is thestrategisttv at gmail.com. And once again, guys, make sure you do check us out uh, next week uh, when we do do on July 28th uh, at 10 p.m. Uh, as Buddha had said, when we go over Genius's Plus 2 Plus 2 Colossus PVT. Yeah, and seriously, do go check out the YouTube because we have uh, our past videos up there. We covered a number of builds already. We covered DRG7 Roach Rush. We covered uh, Forge Fast Expand PVZ. We've covered the One Rack Fast Expand for TVZ. And, uh, you know, we have to do that for TVP and TVT <laughs> and all sorts of different stuff with those variations. But uh, please, go go check those out. Let us know how we're doing, you guys. Subscribe if you want. And, uh, yeah, are, are we done, Octane? We are yeah. done, guys. So thank you very much for watching the show. And we'll see you guys next time. All right. Remember, practice hard, win easy. <laughs>